All right, today is the day and we are back. It has been quite a while. Um, another bout of kidney stones. And this time it put me into the hospital because it was so big, I had to have some help in getting those things out. But that's all over, doing much better there. Also been working on a construction project, it's taken some time but trying to wrap some things up there or get things moved far enough along that we can start to wrap things up. And anyway, we are back with Leviathan today. We have been working on getting the cab mounts. Um, need to get this cab secured so that we can start doing some work on it. And then we will be moving on to the cabin in the back as well because of those uh, mounts position some things. Anyway, they were a little bit difficult as we had to make the mounts um, extend underneath the cabin section of the subframes. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment as we dive in to look at building some cab subframe mounts. Let's jump in. Now to understand what we're talking about, we're gonna take a look underneath the cab and see that this bracket right here, that is our point that needs to transfer its load to this little tower here, which is the mounting point on our chassis. But you'll see the problem is that that mounting point is underneath the subframe of our cabin. So we need to have a cantilevered mount to move the load back there. Before we can do that, we have to put in the front mounts. Now the front mounts are gonna be actually pivoting mounts. They're created from a couple of aluminum plates that are gonna weld to the subframe above. Now I've just pounded a, a steel bushing in between these. For one thing, to use them as an alignment tool to put these two pieces of plate together. And the other thing is that bushing is gonna transfer the load onto the aluminum, spread that weight out a little bit. Now we have those things welded up. We're gonna bolt them to a little extension that we've already added to the chassis. You may have seen this in a video where we built this unditching roller mechanism and these extensions for the chassis up to here. Bolt those plates through that piece that's already been drilled and that'll hold them in place, that bolt, while we weld them all together. And once we get these uh, pivot points done, then we can move on to the, the rear. Now the rear was created with a bunch of uh, gusseted plates, all slot and tab welded together. And they kind of bolt, or not bolt up around, well they will bolt in the end, but they are going to get welded around a couple of square tubings that intersect each other. Once we've pounded them around those tubes, we will just clean those things up nicely with some wire brush and some acetone, get them ready to weld. Now, uh, it's been pretty cold around here, so I'm going to preheat this whole thing with a torch because uh, it takes a long time for the TIG welder to put enough power through all this aluminum to get it the temperature to weld very well. And you'll also notice that here I'm going to lay down, wrap one arm around the chassis, one arm around the feeding rod through a hole, and run the controller with my knee. Now, this is real-world welding. Nothing that you'll see on the internet where you're uh, working on a bench with uh, some device rotating your part for you. This is what seems to be in the real world is uh, contorting yourself into odd positions to get where it needs to be. Or even uh, like here, bending your filler rod to feed it back at an angle that you just can't hold your arm into. But whatever it takes, we'll do it to get it done. And once we get a weld on top, it's time to go into the bottom and do some more contorting. Luckily, we have 40 inch tires on this thing and that holds that cab nicely up in the air out of our way. Well, at least as much as we need to. With that weld in place, it's time to bolt our steel cantilevered beam into place. Well, this is a trial fit because we need to add one more gusset, a reinforcement to this steel beam. We're gonna add some components here to get things lined up though to get ready for that new plate that we're gonna add to it. Now I'm dr drilling through the sheet metal of this uh, mounting point because uh, that's going to extend a coilover shock absorber up to our cantilevered beam. Now these coilovers are uh, made for going on ATV vehicles and they support about 750 pounds each. So one on each side, we should have plenty of support for our 600 pound cab. Of course, some of that load is carried by the front pivots as well. But these coilovers are going to give us some suspension ride on that cab so that you're not always in the hard bottom off-road bouncing. 
Well, once we get this thing bolted in place, we have uh, used that to figure out where this new gusset plate needs to go. Got that all cut out, ready to go. And they're gonna tack weld it in place. Now you notice this new gusset plate also extends over where my hand is holding what I call the fingers. Kind of looks like Wolverine's claws, in fact, if you look at it. But those are the points where the shock is being held at the top point. Tacked in place, we're gonna get the thing all welded up. And those fingers also extend in through the tubing to reinforce that whole tubing as well. Now here it is all finished, all painted up with a nice thick layer of uh, chassis black paint. Painted up good so that you guys will not worry about galvanic action between our aluminum and steel parts. Now that new gusset plate also has a little notch in it so it allows it to be held in place. Slide that notch over part of that fixture and that will hold it while we get our, our bolts back in place. And there's three bolts that come from the top, two from the sides, and that holds our fingers right in position to exceed that shock absorber. And of course, now that we've got that bolted in place, time to get that shock, that coilover, bolted back into position again. And uh, when it is in place, we can see that this thing is gonna be uh, greatly suspended. A little flat spot on top of the tower right in front of that coilover. That is gonna be the spot for a bump stop and a piece of steel cable that's going to be a safety anchor in case these shocks ever broke in a rollover or something that cable would keep everything tied together now additionally another safety thing we're going to do is we're going to drill all of these brackets that have been welded to the subframe and put a bolt through them now aluminum is a little more prone to fatiguing and cracking at some weld joints so we're going to like i said put bolts through all these brackets up here in the pivot brackets and back on the cantilever brackets as well. Like I said, any of those welds ever break, that bolt will be there to hold the aluminum in place. And with all that, we're getting just about done with all of our pickup points so this cab is secure. Time to let the winch out, let the weight back down on the brackets completely. And with the winch releasing its weight, it's like pinched all these uh, bracing I've got set up in the front. We'll get it out from underneath there. Maybe what it takes is a little uh, shoulder action to lift that cab, get them out. And with that, it's free. Well, there we have the cab is in place. And now we can move on with doing some of the things that are gonna go on inside the cab. We have a lot of the sheet metal, it is tacked in place. The dashboard, the seat mounts, things like that need to be um, permanently welded, ready for fixtures and things to attach to them. Anyway, if you are new to this channel or we haven't seen the videos before of putting this cab on or the manufacturing of this cab in aluminum. I'm going to go ahead and put a video up right here. You can go back and see that. And if you like this kind of content, off-roading fabrication, make sure you join the channel by subscribing down below and ringing the little notification bell so we will remind you when those videos become available. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Come back. See us again.